Shattered Dreams is a two-day school-based program that promotes responsible decision-making by high school juniors and seniors regarding drinking and driving by showing them how irresponsibility can end all dreams. A year ago in April, I was watching the news and they did a small segment and they didn't even really call it Shattered Dreams. They said it was a drunk driving program that had been done in Carrollton and it looked so cool. I just thought, we need to do that. I didn't know anything about it, but I saw a Carrollton police car. So the following Monday, I started calling the Carrollton police and I got passed around and passed around. And finally, this great lady said, oh, I know who you need to talk to. And so she put me through to Lieutenant Gary Anderson and he has been my mentor. He has just been wonderful, gave me all the information I needed and sent me to the right place, which was to the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. The Shattered Dreams program is basically to try to get kids to prevent drinking and driving accidents, not necessarily during prom, but for all times, to try to lower the, the death on the roads from drinking and driving. They have the meeting with you, and everybody's so nice, and they give you a book about 10 inches high with information you're supposed to commit to memory. And then they say, after you read this, if you still want to get involved, if you still want to do it, call us after you've got your committee. So then I had to get people on board and that I wanted to be as excited as I was about it. I didn't want it to be just another ho-hum project. I wanted it to be sizzle. Part of it deals with uh, the consequences of the drinking and driving, as well as trying to get some of the feelings and emotion and the true impact of drinking and driving as well as of causing injury or death to others. This is something that's been needed for years and the reaction that's from the students, from the volunteers, I must have had 20 people come back to me and tell me thanks for introducing them to this and get, getting them involved because they just don't realize what an impact it can make out there. very first person I had to go to was Mike Kreitzberg who's the principal of our high school because if I couldn't hook him I couldn't get anybody. And Mike was wonderful. He just said, anything I can help you with. And he said, but you know who's going to have to approve it. And I said, I know, but I had to talk to you first. Then I also knew that I needed police and fire. So I went to Chief Jack Long and Chief Terry Webb. And they were so excited about it. Uh, Terry had said that he had wanted, his firemen had wanted to do it, but they just couldn't do it themselves and it had never occurred to them to make it a community project. So once I had the principal and the fire chief and the police chief, then I went to Dr. Jerry Cook, our superintendent of schools. For several reasons, this alcohol awareness education program can be more effective than the traditional programs conducted prior to such events as spring break, prom night, and graduation. Particularly, you know, they focus it around the prom, around graduation, but I think if you can impact them at that time of year, hopefully it carries over for the entire school year. And maybe they take a message home to their parents also. It just seems like uh, that, that the kids uh, was uh, at a point to where I think they're tired of, of kind of being the scapegoat for a lot of complaints about what goes on at the school. And they showed us that they can be young adults and conduct themselves accordingly. Uh, I heard that the prom went very well. There was no incidents related to the prom. On April 27th and 28th, 2000, Duncanville High School juniors and seniors got their taste of shattered dreams as they witnessed a terrible automobile accident occurring near the main entrance of the high school. I was in charge of media and being sure that, uh, that the news media around knew what was going on. The community had an idea what was going on. Uh, so I was in contact with the local newspapers, uh, the radio and TV stations out of Dallas to let them know that the, we, this would be going on, that it was an exercise, that it wasn't a real incident, and that if they wanted to come out and film it and videotape it or be on hand, they were more than welcome and to answer any questions they have. We're hoping, you know, if, if someone saw this on the TV or, or heard about it on the radio and it had an effect on them, that's just an added bonus to what if we could, if we could save one life in, in, in Plano because of what they heard what, uh, Duncanville was doing then that's just an added bonus to the program. The story that leads us up to our fatal accident was performed by real DHS juniors and seniors. This group of eight students would become the key to the success of our video, 
Their dedication and real-to-life acting made the tragedy even more convincing. When I first heard about the program, of course, it was it sounded like such a big thing, and there was I wasn't really sure what it would be like. Um, but we we heard so many positive things about it, and as as the process went on, um, I realized what an effect potentially this could have, and uh, it became very meaningful for me. All the people that I worked with, all the the support from the community, from the people shooting the film from the makeup artists that did our makeup. It was such, it was really an incredible thing. Even, even the administrators within the school and student responses overall. I hope it helps people. Well, um, actually I was pretty open to anything when they first started telling us about it. Um, I was kind of, um, I didn't really know anything about it. You know, at the very beginning I had no idea what it was about. So when they were telling us about it, it was new and it was a different thing and I was excited about it. It sounded like a great idea. And so anything they put me in, I was okay for. I was just being a teenager. I was just being your normal teenager. Like, I've, I've been around the party life area to know what it looks like and to know how people act to it and how stupid they look when they do it. And that's how I looked on the video. I looked retarded. I was like, people were like, oh my gosh, what is she doing, you know? And I was just being honest, you know? Me and Melissa didn't think that it was going to be um, easy to do once we got out there because we were freezing and it just didn't seem real to us at all. It was so crazy getting in there. It was just a surreal feeling. But we got in there and then they started playing that music outside and then we looked at Michael and Michael's one of my best friends and he's laying there with the blood and everything and it just hit you and we started crying and it was really a neat feeling. I thought it was great. I, my whole family thought it was great too. They were just like, that was so good. Like, I get tired of it because they're like, Let's go show so-and-so, you know, and it's like, okay, stop, <laughs> you know. The storyline was simple. A group of five students live out a normal day at school, whereas one of them initiates to involve the others in a plan to skip the next day in order to entertain a drinking party at her parents' house. Several scenes were shot in order to give each character the message about the party. Here we see Doug's character convincing Kathy to attend the party. Although Kathy does not drink and is not very fond of the idea of skipping school, not even the memory of a conversation she had with her mother promising not to drink and drive could prevent her deadly future as she decides to join the party with the other four. When? Tomorrow. Tomorrow at school? Yeah. We ain't going to school. I got a test. Oh, Kathy, you can't be no nerd. And plus we're going to be drinking? Yeah. You can take at least a little sip, you know. Hey, Mom. Hi, Kathy. So I've just been thinking about the uh, proms coming up this weekend. Now, I don't want you drinking and driving after the prom. No, I don't. All right, I guess I'll go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. All right, All right bye. bye. Later in the video, we are able to see that this conversation that Kathy had with her mother was the last thing that Kathy remembered seconds before her death. Meanwhile, we are introduced to an innocent party who are simply living out a normal day at school. Half of my family didn't get that when they, they had watched it a couple of times and they're like, Aren't those, isn't that the people you hit? And I'm like, yeah, you didn't get it, you know? And they're like, oh, okay. It was kind of like, you know, coincidence, you know? Oh, hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, How's it going? Just chilling, you know. Alright, so, out um, you are gonna go to my house tomorrow? What's up? Well, I gotta run it past Mike, you know, see what's going on. Alright, you know. alright, that's cool. You just, yeah. um, go ask him, because I need to know who's gonna come over and everything. Alright, you know? that's cool, that's cool. All right. I'll get back with you. Alright, see ya. Yo, Mike! Hey, what's up? What's up, Doug? What are you doing? Chilling, man, chilling. Hey, that's cool. Say, man, I got a little proposition for you. What's there? Say, man, there's a little skip party going on over at Lucy's house. A little bit of brewski, a little bit of this and that, you know? Is that right? You down, Doug? I'm down, dude. Just give me a call in the morning. All right, man. I'll, I'll call to confirm, you know, see what's up. That's fine. That's cool. All right, man. All right, take man. it easy, Doug. Bye. So how's it going? Yeah, I talked to Mike. You know, he said it's cool, but, you know, I don't know. I may okay. decide to make a guest appearance, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not all sure. Right. I got that, you know, I got that bio test tomorrow. But, you know. Dude, you could skip it, man. Just make it over. 
Yeah, you Cause we need y'all to bring the beer, you know. We'll have some there. Doug said he'll get some, but yeah, we need y'all to bring some more. I may bring more. a little something, something if I decide to come. All right. All right, That's, check it That easy. sounds cool. Yeah. See ya. A party when the parents are not home and the kids are drinking and skipping school is a reality. And we wanted to use a reality-based scenario so the kids would understand.